Welcome back, Akron fans, to another expedition match. This is Shadow Free CC3, bringing you a match between J Raccoon and Cybernetic Pony on Imperium. Which I forgot to mention to the stream. Anyway, this is. Well, it should be interesting. Once again, this is the new version 1.3.1.6.3.1. 1. 1. 1. And. One sec. Anyway, yeah, so the new version that has come out recently, and we, there are a few changes, nothing too major. There's some balance changes, there's some level editor changes, there's quite a bit of behind the scenes stuff not going to go into. I didn't make a video for it because there's really only one visible change, and that's there's some banking animations on the air units, which actually need a bit of work. But otherwise, in case you're wondering, it's they bank... They don't bank from the center, they bank from the wing that they're banking towards. So if they're banking left, the left wingtip stays in one spot, and to the right, the right wingtip stays in one spot. Rather than banking from the center, which they really should. It's odd. Anyway, that's the only real major change. There's some level letter stuff and some balance stuff, which does come up for CISO. The ATHC range actually has been reduced for CISO. And for Vec gear, or actually, this is a CISO mirror, by the way. Though, for curiosity's sake, for Vec gear, the Teth house unit has become a bit more glass cannony. 300 health instead of 420, its damage has been upped as a result of that. 300, by the way, is the same health as the Zion Turcher, which is one tech level below, but more direct combat. More anti-ground combat, and a couple other small changes as well. Far range has increased. Actually, that's a pretty big one. Far range has increased by two, which will probably mean quite a bit more far usage once you see Grekin being played. Anyway... Jericoon going for a bit of a scout. Sorry, Cybernetic Pony going for a bit of a scout. Jericoon, on the other hand, has also gone for a bit of a scout. Although a bit more committed scout with all three of his units, not just the first two. So J Raccoon will likely be... There we go. Well, I mean, able to get through. Both players are going to be able to get through to scout, actually. It's just J Raccoon will be able to deal a bit of damage. I don't think he's going to commit to this. There's really no reason to do so at this stage. Cybernetic Pony has gone for heavy economy. J Raccoon, we haven't seen him go for Heavy Economy yet, but he's likely to echo this out. And then switch to Heavy Economy. Well, Cybernetic Pony losing all of his units that are currently built up, and J Raccoon might actually shoot for this. Well, no. Cybernetic Pony has changed things around to keep... Well, it has a Marine back here. He can still defend. Curiously, J Raccoon not going for the Importer. Very curious that. He really should at this stage in the game just go for the Importer directly to prevent anything from being built. Rather than going for any of this any of these RPs. The RPs are important, but the importer is pretty necessary. Bit surprised he hasn't gone for that. And once again, I apologize for the debug error. I'm really not sure what's causing that. So I've no way to fix it at the moment, at least not within a couple minutes. Anyway. Although I'm surprised it's actually showing, to be honest. I think. Oh. No, there might be one way I can fix it. I think there's actually a config parameter I can change. I'll do that afterwards. Anyhow, first Lancer is coming up for Jericho. As you can see, there's the banking animation. That's that's the banking animation. It's a bit hard to tell right now because we're in fast forward, but yeah, it banks from the wingtip, not from the center. Also, it's dancing. It's just dancing. But that aside... Bit of a distraction. Magrafeb coming for Cybernetic Pony as well, rather quickly. Jericho, on the other hand, back at his base. He is actually about three minutes down from Cyber three and a half minutes down from Cybernetic Pony, getting up his economy. Not even getting an armory yet, although this is a bit early. Cybernetic Pony didn't have one either at this stage. So looks like Cybernetic Pony is going to be. Well, probably not doing too much special. Moving out a bit pretty quickly, building up more of his army. Having a dancing Lancer. That, not sure what's going on there. But anyway, we have, oh, come on, where is this? What are you doing, the Severny Pony? Okay, I guess there's a bug with the Lance trying to hit that particular point and not being able to. Anyway, we have, God, I can't even think what's going on here. Magrafab coming up, so quick Martanks most likely. Severny Pony likely to be attacking with, well, quick Martanks, but he is, He's three minutes out, so it's hard to tell he's not committed to anything at this point. Jericoon, on the other hand, way in the past, he's committed to everything he's doing right now, which is pretty basic stuff, too. I'm not sure why he's remicroing the construction of his economy. It's rather bizarre. Getting an armory up at the 141 mark, 
which is a bit later than Cybernetic Pony had it. So Cybernetic Pony is pretty ahead in terms of tech. Not sure if Jericho's going to plan on going for machinery early on. Maybe go for early tanks. I mean, ATHCs... The big thing about the range change to ATHCs is that it does make them a bit weaker. They were kind of a generalist, which for cost was more effective than tanks. I think the range nerf was meant to bring that in line, though personally I've gone for a damage nerf, being that range, or at least sight range, is one of the ATHC's biggest strengths. But I'm not sure that the developers of Akron follow the rule of buff strengths nerf weaknesses. I don't think they even know about that particular idea. It's a 0k balance maximum. I think it might be beyond that as well, but I don't think it's necessarily one of the Akron devs subscribe to. Anyhow, we do have a Martank early on. We do have Grand Units coming up soon after. We do have a Frigate coming up instead of a second Martank, so no Twin Mar Rush right off the bat. Six minute mark. Jericoon, on the other hand. Jericoon, what are you doing? Okay, getting a factor of the 247 mark, which is once again, actually about the same time as Cybernetic Pony, so they're about on par. Chronally speaking, but a chronally speaking, Jericoon is way behind. He's three minutes down. He's really using up a lot of the time he could use to react, just committing to everything. I'm not really sure what he's expecting to achieve at this point. He actually hasn't scouted out Cybernetic Pony in about six real time minutes. Ever since the start of the game, he doesn't really know what Cybernetic Pony is up to. He doesn't know about the Lancer, doesn't know about the Macrofab, doesn't really know anything that's going on here. And he's really far in the past, so by the time Cybernetic Pony actually goes to attack, Jericho has very little room to react. Cybernetic Pony jumping back to the unplayable past edge, and it appears he's well, possibly setting up for a defense preemptively in case Jericho does attack at this stage. I think he's expecting Jericho to pull off an edge attack right now. And that's not going to happen. Jericho is not thusly prepared, so there's really no reason it's going to happen. But I think Cybernetic Pony might be. Yeah, he's going for an expansion. He's securing the north. I don't think he's going to go for an edge attack right now. His current unit positioning is not suggesting that. In fact, it's suggesting a patrol route. Looks like he's trying to get all these units just patrolling around the front of the base, just in case units come in from J Raccoon further than the past. Good idea. Not going to really matter in this case, but it is a good idea nonetheless. Just to stop them before they get in the base, give you some time to react, extra time to react, especially since J Raccoon is so focused on the unplayable, or the near unplayable past. Getting far into the past. He's gone further towards the present. He's two minutes down from the present now. But he's still pretty far in. He only has 14 orders. Going up, or 14 max orders, I should say. Still going up, while Cybernetic Pony right at the edge of the present, or right before it. Certainly a better, bit better equipped. Once again, we have Grand Units being researched. Once again, we have Mar Tank up. Grand Units just done, and the Mar Tank about to become a Twin Mar at the 702 mark. One and a half minutes up from J Raccoon, who at the 543 mark just now sending a Lancer in. Finding the macro, finding everything. J Raccoon, not sure what he's thinking right now, but he's probably not particularly hopeful about his chances. He doesn't have machinery either. He is getting a mech, probably going to respond in kind. Though, even if he does that, I'm not sure he has... Okay, he is getting machinery. Has that done? Let's see what he goes for. He goes for Heavy Tornado would be the most likely case, given that they would counter the Twin Mars pretty effectively. Though the Frigate is there as a nice counter for that. If he goes for Frigate and Tornado, that could be an interesting choice. But Cybernetic Pony going for a second Macrofab. Getting that up, getting more Frigates up on his own. And that is the... Really good choice, by the way. I've mentioned before, CISO really can and should use multiple production structures, unlike Vecchier and Grecum, which pretty much do parallel production automatically. CISO doesn't have that luxury. So, good on Cybernetic Pony and Jay Raccoon for building multiple production structures, though at the moment... Okay, 639 mark, two factories up. Both of them building Tornads, as expected. And a Macrofab coming up as well, which the Macrofab will likely be building frigates. And Cybernetic Pony is attacking at the 837 mark. While securing the North Expansion, very good thing to do. His attack is being very appearing very successful. Getting rid of the army, no problem. So, Jericho knows what's coming. He knows there's attack coming in. About three minutes up from when he is. He actually jumped back into the past to double-check this. That he has everything set up properly. He knows what he needs. He's was already well aware of what he needed. Had the Tornads coming up already in advance. But yeah. Very wise move, though. He is moving to double-check where that expansion is going to be taken. Very well done there, J-Raccoon. Puts the Lancer right in place. Knows Cybernetic Pony is going to expand behind his attack, as is a good idea to do in general. And he has prepared for that already. Now, at the same time, we don't see what is going on from Cybernetic Pony's point of view. At the 9-minute mark, this green time move will carry J-Raccoon's latest actions, but... That's not up yet. That won't be up for a little while. J-Raccoon double-checking to see what's happening. He does know about the Twin Mar. He does know about the Frigate. He's... Back at the 628 mark, getting a couple macrofabs up just for the sake of getting... Well, gonna get one up. The second one fails, but the first one's up. 
Frigates will soon come out of that. And the Lancer, is it going back home? Why is that Lancer going back home? No, he had it perfect. He was just right. I think he's... Might want to patrol between the two expansions, actually. Put a patrol mark route here, or patrol mark here, patrol mark here, and just keep on that. That Lancer will not help in the main combat against the Frigate, but it will help against a Marine trying to go out and expand. At the very least, it'll see it coming. It'll probably kill it, too. But it will definitely see it. That's the important thing. Jericho will know about that expansion. He does have his Tornads up. Three Tornads. No for the support units. And where's the Frigate? The frigate's got to be here somewhere. Because there's nowhere else it can be. I really don't know. Where, why is that Frigate not being built? Anyway, Jericho getting ground units as Cybernate Pony gets machinery. And I'm sure if Jericho is going for... Ma is he going for Martanks of his own? Yes, he is! Jericho countering Martank with Martank. Hey, the Tornado's not going to have an easy time against that Frigate. Admittedly, it's only one Frigate and a Lancer, but still. That's not going to help out. That Tornado will pretty much die immediately. The tanks will be of some use, but the question is whether or not they live long enough against the Martanks. Now, Jericho does have his Martanks. They will be up... Well, the second Martank will be up in time, but they will not merge in time. The Tornados are necessary, but the battle gets jumped away from... Why, Jericho? You... Just had the battle coming. Well, watch again. He, the battle's about to start again. Just re against that. And Cybernetic Pony, is he moving back? It looks like he's putting his Martanks, or Twin Martanks, in a really bad situation. About to go down. Well, basically, that's gone down. The Frigate and Lancer have really nothing they can do at this point. The tank's going to tear them apart. They are moving in over. Cybernetic Pony has re them in. They will get rid of a Tornado before going down themselves. But after that, the tank's going to take them out. The Tornado can't do much against it, but the tank can very easily. And further assaults coming in, getting rebuffed by J Raccoon's forces. Emergency defense force, but it does work. However, that Lancer... Where is that Lancer? J Raccoon, from his point of view, has the Lancer in the wrong expansion. That Marine was still going to the northern expansion, while the Lancer is in the west center expansion, not the northwest expansion where it needs to be. This is... Unplayable past Edge. So this is pretty much what's going to happen at the end. J Raccoon... Not in position, though. His unit's actually not moving out. I think he might have undone this attack. He needs to move forward. This is his point of view, by the way. And he needs to get up north, deal with this Twin Mar. This is pretty much the last iteration of this attack. So once this goes through, then we will have the next iteration, or next attack coming in. Although it looks like Jericho... Why is he not responding? Jericho, move north. Okay, there we go. Jericho's moving his Tornads north. His Twin Mar is done. It will be able to help deal with it. And a second Mark tank coming in as well. And the Frigate and Lancer are nowhere to be found, so this Twin Mar is going to go down after dealing minimal damage, getting rid of some infantry and a mech. Not quite able to get rid of the Macrofab. That is key. That Macrofab is not down, and an MFB is going to be coming up soon after, probably to repair the Macrofab and just generally be a nice repair force. Now, at the same time, Cybernetic Pony building up... Oh, she hasn't built up anything yet. He's building up stuff later on. He's getting quite a bit where Jericho is focused. But right now, just trying to re-micro around this. He does not. Ha he does have an expansion in the northwest. He did take that while attacking, as he should. And he will be getting heavy cruisers. No aerospace for nukes, but he is getting a heavy cruiser. And he's going to be just getting more of those. It looks like he... Okay, getting more tanks on top of that. Not sure if he's going to go for the nukes, the heavy cruiser, eventually. But right now, he's not. Just wants the firepower. And Jericoon appears to be going for a counterattack. Double check from his point of view. With the 1007 mark, Jericoon... No, he went for a bit of a scout. Wanted to get a marine up there. Just to scout out what's going on. But no counterattack yet. And Jericoon point out, is starting to run out of resources. One of the crates has been exhausted. The other two have, like, a hundred pulls between them. So, 800 liquid crystal between them. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, what does he have left? His point of view, 1121 mark, he's pretty much the same. Both players are about the same economically right now, but Cybernetic Pony has his expansion. Jericoon does not. Anywhere. Have any expansions at all. So, Jericoon at a bit of a disadvantage economically, it's soon gonna bite him, but not quite yet. He did win that fight pretty well, so he's got an economic advantage, or he's got a military advantage. He just isn't gonna hold it unless he attacks right away or expands. One of the two, or both, actually. Both would be good. Not really doing either. Getting some comm centers, however, at the front, just so he knows when Cybernetic Pony is about to attack. Unfortunately, the comm center is not gonna be done before Cybernetic Pony does attack. Cybernetic Pony sees it before it's finished, and he does have Tornads nearby, by the way, so this Tornad gonna scout it out, and it's gonna go down. Yeah. There go the Tornads, and that's it. There is one, not much more to be said here. This comm center is gonna go down. Jerakun, however, has been made aware of this. He knows it's gonna happen. He knows that all this is gonna happen, and he can prepare once again. Getting Gay Tech. Where is his mech? He does have the army for this, by the way. He has a good army to handle this. No mech on the field, though. 
He's going to need to build one of those, and there it is. He has his mech. He's going to be able to get his chronoporters, teleporters, and once that's all set up, he should be pretty solid. We'll see, though. It looks like... Oh, never mind. That's perfectly fine for CPU usage. Sorry, the units are starting a bit. I thought my CPU usage was getting a bit overwhelmed, but apparently not. Apparently it's fine. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony getting some a factory in the northwest as well, so he is starting to commit to that and making sure that he can take the center west on top of the northwest. Cybernetic Pony is quite committed to an expansion heavy play, while J Raccoon trying to go one base, trying to go one base Gatek. Not sure I approve of this. He's about to run out of one more of his crates. Only 60 more LC in this. No, it's 60, sorry. What am I saying, 60? More like 24. Actually, 8. It's the last pull of LC in this crate. And. He has 160 LC left in his base. Fending off another attack, but not nearly as well as he had the first one. This Twin Mar nowhere near the attack, and these Tornados were way out in the open. The tanks, they will help out, but the Twin Mar is going to tear them apart, no problem. So it's a really tough call how to work that out. Looks like he is moving back. He wants to be in range of his MFBs. Wants to be make sure his Twin Mars are kind of in the back, but still in range. Make sure that they are going to take out any ground forces that come in initially. But the tanks are there for the anti-air, and surprisingly not upgrading them to heavy tanks, which are much better for anti-air than regular tanks are. But, not doing that. I'm also aware of the Twin Mar attack to the east. That's not what's important right now. What's important right now is the, this anti-air attack needs to make sure his Tornads survive. His Tornads need to live. That is very important. Cybernetic Pony is coming with this attack. It's pretty inevitable, but he is moving his Tornads too far forward. They cannot attack anti-air. Jericoon, what are you doing? Tornads are terrible anti-air. They're anti-ground and anti-ground only. That is what they do, exclusively. Okay, they hit air, but they don't hit him very hard. MFB's coming in as well, trying to help out, trying to both fight and heal up. They're drawing fire, which is about the only thing they're doing useful at the moment. No anti-air in play. No frigates. No massive mechs. No tanks left. There's really not much that j Raccoon can do at this point. His only hope is get... Okay, got rid of that Mar Twin Mar before the Heavy Cruiser came in, but the Heavy Cruiser's going to get rid of his own Twin Mar. And he has these frigates, they need to move forward. And they are doing exactly that, getting rid of the frigates. But this is not economically viable. Jerakun basically needs to win without casualties in order to stay ahead here. Cybernetic Pony, he has enough money. He has the Northwest. He's probably got the Center West as well. Not yet, but he basically has control over it, so he's going to take it very soon. He has outside of his base on top of that. So Jerakun, on the other hand, has no more Liquid Crystal in his base. He's out. He's spent. He can chronoport some units back, but not a whole lot survived that assault. These two frigates would be the best bet. Chronoport those back, and he'd have a good chance of dealing with the attack. But he has to make this count. He really has to make this count. Otherwise, Cybernetic Pony has this game, and that will just be it. There's nothing more to be said about that, but down in time they go. The arrival has occurred. No one's checked it out yet, but there has been an arrival. So j Raccoon, we'll see how that works out for him. If it works out properly, then he will be able to at least salvage some of his economy here. And it looks like Blue Time Wave is working out in Cybernetic Pony's favor. Not sure this really made much of a difference. It actually, oh no, it did. No, the battle ended a lot sooner from the looks of it. And it looks like a bit, no, it's still more in Cybernetic Pony's favor. No, the Blue Time Wave is really not inspiring confidence from the looks of it. A lot of stuff still dies and Cybernetic Pony, he can get away with losing stuff. J Raccoon cannot. I mean, Cybernetic Pony does have Gatek of his own. He's got it a little while ago, actually, and you know, a couple minutes ago already. He's solid, getting a teleporter of his own. No chronoporter quite yet, not there anyway. Not in the Northwest either. He's, yeah, like I said, he can easily afford to lose units. And actually able to teleport units back. Some ADHDs up for J-Raccoon further to the present, but not gonna help out too much. Really, that Twin Mar just kills everything on the ground. There's not much you can do about it other than attack it from the air. And J-Raccoon, now the blue time up has come along. The blue time up didn't really change too much from the looks of it. Got rid of the attack, but the Tornads remain dead. No replacements occurred. And it looks like... Oh no, Jericho actually did manage to get through. Never mind. In fact, the Tornads survived. Oh. Interesting. So Cybernetic Pony's actually lost a lot more than he thought he has. These Tornads being alive is a big deal. However, Jericho should probably attack the Northwest. He's not aware of the Northwest at all, is he? He doesn't know anything about that. He could teleport units there if he wanted to. But it looks like he wants to try to chronoport his units back once again to help out. Really not sure how well it's going to work. He's still... Where's the first... Okay, the first chronoport is in the Unplayable Pass, so those frigates have chronoported back. They are solidly chronoported back. 
But Jericoon is still not getting out of his base, and this is killing him. I mean, he has Gay Tech, but one base play is not going to save him. Even with Gay Tech. Actually, especially with Gay Tech, because he has no... He has no money for the Gate Tech. He has all of his resource processors harvesting nothing. Every single one of his crates is empty. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, main base is empty. Secondary bases are fine, of which he has several, actually. So Jericho not going for Cybernetic Pony's expansions. And if he did, that would help a lot. But right now he's not. He is over. No, he is. Never mind. At the 1731 mark, two minutes down from the present, he is going to the northwest, and he will find plenty there. However, one of those things is a frigate. Which will not be pleasant to fight against. Losing a Tornado right off the bat. The Hierarchy Leader, no less. Losing that right off the bat is going to make any further reaction very difficult to do. However, Jericoon can continue to move back. Try to get his units to group up first before going for the Northwest. But he's not doing so. He's not changing this up at all from the looks of it. He, he is continuing to attack directly forward. Why, Jericoon? Don't let your units die like this. This is... Oh! But he is, unfortunately. That Tornado going down. Both of them going... All the Tornado's going down. These... Two frigates are in place, able to deal with everything. Cybernetic Pony was on the ball with his reactions, and his main base is still well equipped. Getting a bunch of Marines as well, looks like he's going to go for a massive Marine teleport. That should probably end the game when it happens. His Twin more will be able to get in here, and a Chronoport happening once again. Jericho and actually Chronoporting back a few units, getting a couple ATHCs back. Looks like he tried to get an MFB as well, but could not afford it. MFB and a frigate as well. Could not afford it, but teleporting these guys in. So getting the ATHCs in early on, try to get rid of the frigates. Not a bad idea. That should help out. However, Cybernetic Pony has Gate Tech. He could easily get Chronoporters of his own if he wanted to. Hasn't yet, but he could. And that would nullify Jericho's only advantage. But Cybernetic Pony has all the rest of the advantages. He has economy. He has military. He actually has tech, surprisingly enough, getting specials. Not sure what he's planning on using it for. He doesn't have nanites. He might go for Temporal Assault and Shield, but no Chronoporters for that either. So I don't think that specials is really worthwhile. But hey, because of heavy tanks, he has Nanite, in fact. That was only banned in the tournament. That's not actually banned in regular play. However, I've not seen it used in years, so I doubt he's going to use it. No one ever uses specials anyway. But, Jericho has been spotted. Cybernetic Pony sees his expansion. Jericho jumping back to the 1641 mark. And this is when those Twin Mars attacks with ATHCs in question that are being chronoported back. Will apparently survive? Will it survive? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. No, one of them actually goes down. Pre Chronoport ATHC goes out, and that really doesn't make much difference in the looks of it. I don't even know where it's. Didn't even see where. Where was its successor? I mean, MFB has gone back and actually helped out quite a bit, clearing out the Northwest base well in advance of this attack that was going to happen. But even then, with that attack, only one Tornado alive, and that is going to be problematic nonetheless. Cybernetic Pony not in much worse position than he was already. Jericho trying to set up a turret with a frigate to get rid of this expansion. Sorry, Cybernetic Pony setting up a turret with the frigate to get rid of the expansion of J-Raccoon. Jericho once again. No, Cybernetic Pony. Does he have Chrono Porter? He pauses if he did, but he does not. No, he does not. Jericho, however, does. And even with it, it's not helping him too much. Even with that Chrono Porter, he still has this MFB here. He's still getting rid of this expansion. Still looks like some Tornads were lost in the process, though. He has. He is low on Tornads. He has one left, so. They have been lost in earlier time waves. However, able to get rid of the Northwest expansion. Maybe. Hard to say. The Twin Mar finally gets in some hits on the MFB. Kills it off. ADHC helps get rid of the frigate. But even with that, Jericoon basically has this one attack. Cybernetic Pony has so much on the map at this point And could easily counterattack. Getting rid of all this. And yeah, Cybernetic Pony definitely has built a lot of... He has a lot in bank as well. All these resources in the bank means that losing this expansion is going to make a big difference. So I really don't know what Jericoon can do at this point. Really, he just kind of dropped the ball by not expanding earlier on. And despite the attempt to go for Gate Tech and go for the one base play on Gate Tech, that is not going to work. One base play on Gate Tech is not how you play this game. So Jericoon. Not going to make it, unfortunately. He does manage to get rid of Cybernetic Pony's Northwest expansion. That, or not even, damage it slightly. Get rid of a factory. Nothing actually has been lost. Cybernetic Pony has gotten back from this, teleported his units in, saved the whole base. Jericho has one more last ditch effort to Chronoport, and that's about all he's got, and I don't think that's going to work. Nope, not even. Jericho surrenders, and that is game. Cybernetic Pony wins the game, and that will be that game. So I will have another one for you guys shortly, which will be Cybernetic Pony and Jericho once again, but this time on Act Natural. So stay tuned for that.